Hello YouTube, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Sri Tips. I've got an assortment of catalytic converters here and what we're going to be doing is uh, making a video on how to uh, extract the platinum group metals from these converters. Before I do that, I'd like to go over a little bit of uh, information that I've uh, learned about these uh, converters. Because the first thing is refining platinum group metals is difficult. It's not easy to do. It almost requires a chemistry degree because there's so many different variables that have to be dealt with when you're working with these metals. The dangers associated with uh, getting the platinum and palladium metals into solution are just not worth uh, the, uh, the return that you can expect out of these catalytic converters. There's not going to be much metal at all. Take the time to look up the word platinosis. P-L-A-T-I-N-O-S-I-S, -I -I platinosis, and read those symptoms before you dive into trying to do some catalytic converters of your own. My goal was to get enough experience so that I could process these catalytic converters and do my stock pot. And then once I get those done, I probably won't mess with the platinum group metals ever again until it comes time to do my stock pot. Uh, it's just too much danger involved, uh, too much risk for injury, and my health is more valuable to me than the metals that I expect to recover from these catalytic converters. This one here, and I want you to look at this one carefully. This one might be okay, I guess. Uh, let me pick one out here that uh, this one should be okay. Here's one. This one here. You see how shiny and bright that metal is with a little bit of rust on it? And then there's some rust down in there on the substrate. And uh, what I think has happened here is the uh, uh, what thieves will do is they'll take these uh, catalytic converters whole like this with the casing on them and then uh, pass an acid solution through the substrate inside here, extract most of the platinum, and then put them up to be sold on eBay. Okay, I've got a few more here. This one should be okay. I'm going to have to cut that open. I don't know. There's some... Uh, these Most of these have probably been already processed before I got them. I bought these on eBay several years ago. And... Uh, oh, that's probably going to have some metal in it. I had to cut the casing away on that one. But uh, like this one here, bright and shiny, clean looking substrate, that's probably already had uh, the, the uh, coating or the platinum taken from it. So that's just the way it is. That's the nature of this uh, deal here. Okay, these over here, these are uh, metal substrate. In other words, there's a metal, uh, it's not ceramic down in there, it's a piece, piece of metal. You can see how it's got a, a spiral pattern to it. And those you've got to process with the, uh, with the metal casing on. Otherwise get a press maybe and press that out of there. But uh, I'm just going to put these right in the bucket and process them just like they are. So these are metal casing and metal substrate. This part here is metal. It's not ceramic. Over here... These are a metal casing with a ceramic substrate. Here I have some uh, catalytic converter beads. I bought these on the internet, on eBay. I think I paid a couple hundred bucks for that bottle right there. And then in here I've got a uh, crushed up catalytic converter that my friend Rick gave me. Thank you, Rick. And so we'll go ahead and process that. And that's a rundown of all the catalytic converter uh, items that I have here that I'm going to try to process. And uh, let's get to it right now. Here's my chop saw with the saw blade removed and a metal cutting wheel installed. This configuration works pretty good for opening up these cats, but uh, notice that there's a lot of dust flying around, so a uh, protective mask is required.
In this shot, I use a handheld angle grinder to remove the metal casings from the substrate. Now this part of the project took uh, quite a while, about an hour and a half for me to cut all these casings off. There's a lot of dust flying around, hard on the machines. This one had a little bit of a different configuration. I decided to uh, just go ahead and chop one end of it off. And then there was some metal burrs there from the uh, cutting wheel. So I bent them down. And then I take it over to the, uh, I bent them out of the way there. Take it over to the, uh, the wood blocks here and just try to beat it out with a hammer. Doesn't come out real easy and those things are pretty tough. This one here was already open at both ends, so I just decided to uh, break it apart and get it out that way. Uh, they still don't come out very easy. Now this one was flanged on one end, so I just put it on some wooden blocks there and uh, poked it out with the hammer. Each catalytic converter was different, but they were all a pain in the butt to get out of their uh, casings. This one had a thick steel casing with a uh, very thick steel flange that I had to cut through. Uh, this chop saw really came in handy for this one. This is all of our uh, catalytic converter material that I've uh, processed to this point so far. Over here we've got uh, in the front box there, those are those metallic substrate catalytic converters and I've decided not to do those. I'm, I'm not sure what to do with those. But I'm going to skip those and I'll probably just sell them on eBay. Uh, and behind there is the uh, scrap from the shells, the uh, casings, the metal casings that we uh, cut away from the substrate. Over here, I've got the catalytic converter beads. I'm going to process. I'm going to process those separately in that little bucket there, right behind the catalytic converter beads. 
and then over here I've got all my uh, substrates that I cut out of the metal casings and I'm going to put them in these buckets right there uh, behind the substrates. I've got two five gallon buckets in there. I'm going to go ahead and put my mask on and I'm going to set all that up right now. After pouring these beads into that bucket, I seen it was about two-thirds full, so I decided not to do it in its own separate bucket and just added it to the other catalytic converter material. Okay, in this clip I've moved the uh, containers outdoors. As you can see, it's raining there. I had my uh, mask on to protect me from those uh, hydrochloric acid fumes. I put one gallon of 31% hydrochloric acid into each bucket. Then I add uh, water, about a gallon or so to each bucket, maybe a gallon and a half. So it makes about a 50-50 solution there of water and hydrochloric acid. And then I just uh, kind of eyeball it and pour in about a cup of bleach into each container. That's just regular household bleach, one cup into each container. And then I loosely fit the lid on there, as you can see. Cover it up and wait for it to leach. This is the following day. I've got my little 3M P95 mask on to protect me from the chlorine gas. And what I'm going to do here is uh, go ahead and check the leach. As you can see, when I pull this cover off, it's going to have a nice uh, orange tint to it, which means I'm getting metals leaching out of the catalytic converters. Here I'm going to draw a little sample so we can test some of that solution. And then what I'll do is I'm going to add another splash of bleach to each container, maybe about 30, 40 ml each or so, just enough to produce some more chlorine gas. What I'll do is I'll come out every day for the next couple weeks and uh, add little uh, small splashes of chlorine gas to each container so that I can uh, keep it saturated with chlorine gas to, uh, to uh, leach out those metals. This is a sample from our uh, catalytic converter leach. I'm going to put some on a little filter paper here. Then I'm going to test it with some stannous chloride. See if we got uh, metal going in the solution. And there you see it. Got a nice stain there, which means we're getting metals going into solution right now. This is about a minute after I took that test, and if you look at it, it's turning green with a slight tint of orange to it. So that means a palladium and a little bit of platinum going into the solution. This is day two of the leaching process and rather than just pouring the bleach on top of the uh, solution there, I was trying to find a way to get that bleach down to the bottom of those uh, leaching buckets. So what I did, I took a piece of PVC tube there, a rigid PVC tube, and inserted a, uh, 
a soft piece of tubing inside of it and then pushed it down into the bottom of the bucket. And then here I'm removing the rigid piece of tubing. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill a syringe that just fits on the end of that tubing. I'm gonna fill that syringe with some household bleach and then inject it down into the bottom of the bucket. I noticed that when I pour the bleach in, I get a bubbling, fizzing reaction on the surface of the liquid, but I wasn't sure if that, uh, that chlorine was uh, reaching the bottom pieces down in the bottom of the bucket there. So I want to try this experiment to uh, inject the bleach down into the bottom of the bucket to see if I can get uh, more contact with the uh, substrate that has the platinum group metals on it if I injected that uh, bleach down into the bottom of the bucket. So that's what this experiment is all about. And as you can see, I already did it on the other bucket. I did it ahead of time to make sure uh, everything was going to go okay and it wasn't going to spew a bunch of junk back out at me through that tube. And as you can see, it worked out pretty good. So this is how I'll be adding the, uh, the bleach from now on to these buckets rather than just pouring it into the top. I don't know if this makes a difference or not. I think you can just go ahead and add the bleach uh, from the top and be okay with it. But I just wanted to uh, get some more contact between the bleach and the uh, platinum bearing uh, pieces down in the bottom of those buckets. This is day two of the leach and I just added a little bit more uh, bleach to the leaching buckets out there and I got a, a sample of the solution from the leaching buckets day two of the experiment. We'll put a little drop on a piece of filter paper here and then I'm going to add some stannous chloride. And we get a stain. It's still pretty light. A little darker than it was yesterday. But we're getting platinum group metals going into solution here. Over here is yesterday's test. Here's today's test. It's a little bit darker today. I touched the edge of this with this one, so that's why you got a little dark circle right here. It's very faint on this one, and this one's getting a lot darker, so that means we're getting uh, we're leaching metals out of the uh, solution and it's becoming more concentrated every day. This is day six of the leaching process. I've been adding bleach this way for the past six days, once a day, every day. And today I decided to uh, add a couple of spoons of sodium chlorate to try to speed the process along. I don't think this is necessary. The bleach will do the trick if you just let it leach in there long enough. But I decided to add the sodium chlorate to uh, try to speed things up. When sodium chlorate is added to a hydrochloric acid solution, chlorine gas is formed. And so I decided to add a little bit of sodium chlorate here to each bucket so I could try to speed things up. Just wanted to show you right quick what the temperatures are inside these buckets. Sixty-one Fahrenheit, sixteen degrees Celsius. Sixteen Celsius, sixty point five degrees Fahrenheit. It's been about one week since I started uh, doing the leaching, 
Uh, I've been adding bleach every day. I started adding sodium. I started adding sodium chloride about two or three days ago to try to speed things up. We need to stand this chloride test here. So we got going in the solution. And there we're getting a pretty nice dark stain there now. Looks like it's brown, green, and a little bit of orange in it. So we'll definitely get some platinum group metals going into solution. Be ready to go ahead and uh, drain that solution off, filter it, and process it here very shortly. Okay, this is a Stannis test for the other bucket there. And that one's much lighter than the first test. One bucket's got a little bit more going on in it than the other one does. I think it's because uh, uh, some of the catalytic converters had already been leached out when I put them in there. But we got platinum group metals going into a uh, solution in both buckets. This is day 15 of the leach. I quit adding bleach because the volume of the liquid was increasing. And so I've just been adding sodium chloride every day to the uh, leaching buckets. This is day 17 of the leach. And uh, what I've decided to do is go ahead and uh, set up a filter rig and filter out these solutions uh, so I can go to the next step of the process. What I've got here is a five gallon bucket. I've cut a couple of slots in it so I can fit this thick glass rod in here and then I'm going to use that as a prop to put my uh, strainer in here. What I'll do is I'll line the bottom of this now with some uh, filter papers. These are just coffee filters. Now we'll take this rig out to the uh, the leaching buckets and we'll go ahead and filter this uh, this solution through this uh, filter that I have set up here. Okay, the platinum bearing solution gets trapped in these uh, small channels inside these ceramic substrates. So what I'm doing is I'm using a little bit of hydrochloric acid to rinse as much of the uh, platinum bearing solution out of the substrates that I can. Here I'm going to add some pH up for swimming pools, which is sodium carbonate, 
And uh, the reason I'm adding this is to neutralize a little bit of that acid before I go to the zinc step. If I leave that solution highly acidic, it'll just eat up all the zinc needlessly. So I'm just adding a little sodium carbonate here to try to neutralize some of the acid before I add the zinc to cement out the platinum group metals. Here I'm getting the solution ready to transfer inside into my fume hood. You can see there's quite a bit of chlorine being given off still from that solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lid on it and uh, carefully walk it into my fume hood and get it in the fume hood as quickly as possible to uh, prevent a bunch of that chlorine gas from getting all over my shop. Step in the process is to uh, precipitate out the uh, metals out of that solution that we extracted from the catalytic converters with zinc. This is 50 pounds of zinc pieces that I bought from a website called Roto Metals, and they're scraps left over from the projects that they do with uh, strips of zinc. This pure zinc metal. What I'm going to do here is cut it up with a pair of shears make some small pieces so we can cement out the platinum group metals out of that solution. I'm going to transfer a little bit of the solution into this 5 liter beaker here uh, so we can add some zinc to it and start cementing out the platinum group metals. Now I'll add some of those strips of zinc to the uh, solution here so we can uh, cement out the platinum group metals. The zinc metal is highly reactive, much more so than the platinum group metals. It's higher up on the list in the reactivity series of metals. So what will happen here is as that zinc goes into solution uh, from the acid, the platinum group metals will cement out of solution as a fine black powder. In this shot, I'm adding a, a piece of sheet zinc that was used, partially used, in a, a previous reaction, uh, cementing out some palladium from my palladium video. And uh, this is two times normal speed. You'll see how fast it uh, devours that piece of zinc. In the refining community, using a more reactive metal such as zinc to precipitate out a less reactive metal such as the platinum group that we're working with here that action uh, is called cementing we're cementing out the platinum group metals with zinc i've got a lot of solution to react with that zinc so i'm going to move this up out of the way And then I'm going to fill this other beaker up and start another reaction in this, uh, in this beaker. I'm only filling these about halfway full so that I don't uh, overflow the beaker. That's a little under half there. Now 
I'll go ahead and add some zinc to this one. Actually, I'm going to add a whole sheet to this one. Just bend it in half. No use in cutting it up. It's all going to get dissolved anyway with the reaction. With that platinum in the acid solution, what will happen is the zinc will trade places with the platinum and palladium. The zinc will go into solution and the platinum group metals will come out of solution as a fine black powder. Okay, you can see here that the uh, little black flecks of metal are coming up off the zinc. That means that the platinum group metals are coming out of solution and the zinc is going into solution. Is what we in the refining uh, area call cementing out the platinum group metals on zinc. This one's still going here. It's got a while to go before it starts uh, showing the metals. The zinc has gone into solution now. The solution looks a little bit greenish colored and there's a black powder coating the bottom of each beaker. I've still got a few pieces of zinc left here. It's been about uh, two or three hours since I added the zinc to these two solutions. This one's looking kind of dark. This one's looking kind of greenish gray color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some uh, hydrochloric acid and see if I can get these solutions to clear up a little bit. pieces of zinc in here so I can get this reaction to continue. This one looks okay I guess. It's got some pieces of zinc in it still. Put some hydrochloric acid in this one as well. See if I can burn off the rest of that zinc. I add a few more pieces of zinc here to try to get that solution to clear up. Solutions have uh, been allowed to sit overnight. This one's cleared up, and now this one's got turned black. So I'm going to add a little bit of hydrochloric acid to this solution over here, and then I'm going to add a few more pieces of zinc to it. Not very much, maybe 20, 30 mL. Then throw in a few pieces of zinc and hopefully this will clear up. And I'm going to allow this to settle for a little while. See if I can get this solution to clear up like this one did. This view is licking up underneath the beaker. I'm going to pick it up and show you the uh, black powder that's accumulated on the bottom of it. That's our platinum group metals that have cemented out of the solution onto the zinc metal. I'm going to get this acidic waste solution off my platinum group uh, metals in uh, powdered form there out of that beaker. I've got this tube full of water. And what I'm going to do is put my thumb over one end and then submerge the other end inside the solution in the beaker there. And I just let my thumb off down here and let it siphon out. I've 
got two liters of uh, hot tap water here. I'm just going to add this to this beaker. Try to get the reaction to stop. See if this uh, black powder will settle out real good for me. Two liters of tap water here. see it or not on the camera but uh, this beaker here is starting to clear up since I've added the uh, hydrochloric acid and the few extra pieces of zinc as soon as this clears up what I'll do is siphon this off and add some tap water and try to get it to settle out so we can get the black powder out of there I've got this second beaker to clear up pretty good here I put some hydrochloric acid in there and a few more pieces of zinc I think you can see down there it's still kind of reacting a little bit but all the uh, black powder is settled, so I'm going to go ahead and siphon this out now. Okay, to siphon this out, I'm going to fill this tube full of water. And then what I'll do is hold my thumb over one end, stick the other end down into the solution that I want to siphon out, and then let my thumb off. got this tube full of water it's tap water it doesn't have to be distilled water and I'm gonna go ahead while I'm at it and siphon this beaker out as well I've got the solutions out of both of these beakers siphoned out now what I'll do is go ahead and uh, get the contents of this beaker and combine it with this one right here right now Now that I've got this beaker freed up, I'm going to go ahead and pour the rest of the solution in the bucket into this beaker. Now I'm going to fish through this one and uh, get out any undissolved pieces of zinc and add them to this beaker. Alright, now what I'm going to do is take uh, the metal that I have uh, cemented out with zinc, transfer it into this tall beaker. Alright, now I'll set this. This is our precipitated uh, platinum group metals from the zinc. Set this back here out of the way, and as you can see over here, the uh, the other solution starting to dissolve the zinc, and uh, we'll get that's the previous pieces of zinc that was in this left over. I took the big hunks out of here, put it in here, so it can uh, start precipitating out the metals out of this uh, platinum solution. And I'm going to bring this beaker back up front. Go ahead and add some pieces of uh, zinc, some small pieces. That beaker's kind of full, so I don't want to put too much in at once. Uh, it could overflow here on me, so I'm just going to put a few pieces in to get this thing started. And of course, we get an immediate reaction there. been about 15-20 minutes since I added those pieces of zinc to this solution. I'm going to try to add a whole piece here. Hope it doesn't boil over. I'm going to put it in slow. I think it'll be all right.
here you can see the importance of keeping this thing covered. That reaction is causing it to fizz up and uh, droplets are condensing on the cover there and dropping back into the solution. If I didn't have this covered, that stuff would all be going into my fume hood right now. less than about five minutes to dissolve that piece of zinc in there so now I'm going to go ahead and add another piece here a little bit bigger piece this time still get a quite a uh, vigorous reaction from it but as this uh, zinc gets consumed the reaction will calm down as the acid gets consumed consumed Okay, and that last bit of footage there, it took about 15 minutes to completely dissolve that piece of zinc I stuck in there. This one's a little thicker. I'm going to go ahead and add it now. And as you can see by that reaction, it's uh, calmed down quite a bit. Most of the acid's been used up from dissolving the other two pieces of zinc. You can see some black particles floating around in there. That's our platinum group metals coming out of solution as the zinc goes into solution. It's been about 15 minutes since I added that last sheet of zinc. And as you can see, the color is uh, changing to a grayish green color. The pink and red and orange color is going away. And what that means is our uh, platinum group metals are cementing out or precipitating out on those sheets of zinc metal that I've added. And that's what we want it to do. Uh, liquid that we've got leaching out here, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the next bucket of it right now. I'm going to put my mask on and proceed with that, but this is pretty much the exact same thing as, uh, as with the first bucket. All right, here's my uh, solution from the second bucket. It's got a little bit of cloudiness to it, so what I'm going to do is uh, filter it another time, see if I can get that cloudiness to clear up.
me several hours to get this uh, filtered. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, amount of liquid that I have filtered into the big beaker and start cementing it out with some uh, zinc. going to take the zinc out of here. It's got a bunch of black uh, material on it. And I'm going to move it over to this beaker over here. It should start reacting right away. This piece of zinc right here had a passive layer of uh, precious metals on it, preventing the uh, solution from getting to the zinc underneath. And now it's starting to eat through that, and I'm getting a nice reaction going here. I'm going to try to get this solution here to clear up. I'm going to add a little bit of hydrochloric acid. And then I'm going to put some pieces of zinc in there and try to get the solution to clear up. What I want to do here is uh, show the temperature it's well above ambient, it's at 124 degrees Fahrenheit, 51.2 Celsius. This is an exothermic reaction and all these beakers get that hot when I do this zinc reaction. I'm going to go ahead and add another sheet of zinc to the, uh, to the beaker here. just about got the entire solution uh, filtered here. I've been filtering this solution for about six hours. It's got a lot of fine particulate in it. It loads the filter paper up and then it takes a long time to filter everything out. Over here I've got my two beakers that's cementing out the platinum metals with zinc. This one's kind of clearing up a little bit. I got zinc in there with a little hypochloric acid. This one was allowed to sit all night. It's real black. So what I'm going to have to do is add some more acid. And a few pieces of zinc to it. Try to get it to clear up. Not too much. some pieces of zinc here to throw them in. Hopefully that'll clear that solution up for me in a little while. I finally got all that solution filtered out. Go ahead and add it to this clean beaker here. It's pretty clear. It's clear as it's going to get, I guess. Add to the beaker and start putting zinc in so we can cement out the uh, metals. Now I'll start adding a few pieces of zinc here. Get it started. that 
I've noticed here, the uh, less concentrated the solution is, the more tendency it has to uh, form this colloidal suspension of metals that uh, stays suspended in the liquid and does not settle. Want to do a little review here. This beaker here has got the uh, solids that have been precipitated with zinc from the first bucket. I added some uh, hot tap water, trying to get that to settle out, but as you can see, I got a colloidal suspension in there, but most of it's settled down to the bottom. This beaker here has got uh, contents from the second bucket that we filtered out from the leaching. This one does as well, and it's kind of clearing up. This one's starting to clear up a little bit, but these were uh, less concentrated solutions, so they're going to tend to stay suspended like this. And this is the most recent beaker here that I just uh, added zinc to after filtering out the fine particulate. So I've got all four of these beakers now with my precious metals in them. I'm going to go ahead and siphon these off and try to get all the metals into this beaker right here. Paste the bucket down here and uh, see if I can collect all the metals out of all three of these beakers into this one beaker. Got a tube of water here, full of water. I put my thumb over one end and just go ahead and siphon each of these out. This is the solution that I siphoned off of the beakers. It's obviously got some precious metals in it. I'll just cover it up and uh, let it settle out for a couple days and then siphon off the uh, waste and recover that, the metal out of it. But for now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pick through and get all the pieces of zinc out of these two here. I don't know if you can see it on camera here or not, but the level of the uh, black powder is about right here in this beaker where I've collected everything. So it's about a quarter of an inch deep or so. As soon as this reaction is complete, I'll siphon it off into my waste bucket down here, and then I'll add the metals that uh, precipitate out with the zinc into this main beaker and then we'll go from there. This speaker here has had long enough to react. I'm going to go ahead and siphon that off into the waste bucket. Now I'm just kind of making this up as I go. I've got a bunch of pieces of zinc left in here with some precious metals on it. Now there was a little bit of black sediment down there. Try to drain that into my main beaker here. That black powders the uh, precious metals. Now what I'm going to do is add some hydrochloric acid to this try to burn out all the rest of the residual zinc that's in there. And just let it settle. Okay, I think I'm going to conclude part one of the video here. I've got the bulk of my uh, black powder in this beaker. Got some hydrochloric acid in it. I'm going to try to burn off all the zinc and then I'm going to have to rinse it real good to get the zinc out of there. This is a bunch of zinc that's left over from the reactions. And then I got a bunch of waste down here that's going to have to be treated, probably about three, four gallons. 
after that settles out. What I'll probably do is add this zinc to this bucket, just let it react, and then siphon off the waste and add any precious metals that settles out to the bottom of this bucket to my stock pot. solution to settle overnight here. This has got our uh, mixed black platinum group metals in it. Uh, sitting in some hydrochloric acid to rid it of zinc. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, siphon this off into my waste bucket down here. Here, full of water. I'm going to stick my thumb over one end and then stick the other end into the uh, solution that I want to siphon off. And I just let my thumb off down here in my waste bucket and siphon this liquid off the precious metals in this beaker. This is our platinum group metals. It's been uh, soaking in hydrochloric acid. It's going to have some zinc in there with it in solution. And I want to get that out of there. The only way to do it is to rinse it over and over with lots of water but if I do that it's going to form this colloidal suspension that's hard to settle watch what happens when I'm putting in hydrochloric acid here and watch what happens here as soon as I put it in it forms this colloidal suspension that does not settle and so I'd have to rinse it and wait a day for it to settle. But instead, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this uh, up on a magnetic stir bar here. Up a magnetic stir. I've got a stir bar. I'm going to add that in. I'm going to turn the stir on and get that stirring. See that? Now I'm going to start heating the solution up a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'm going to re-dissolve this using hydrogen peroxide. I don't want to use any nitric acid here because nitric acid causes problems when you go to try to precipitate this out. It wants to put the metal back in solution if you got nitric in there. So I'm going to avoid using nitric acid. I'm going to use hydrogen peroxide and hydrochloric acid instead. Okay, just to let you know what's going on here, I've got the uh, platinum group metals sitting in hydrochloric acid, 31%. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some hydrogen peroxide. I've got the heat on here, and it's stirring with my stir plate. I'm going to add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide here. I want to put these metals back in solution so I can get a concentrated solution and then precipitate it back out with some zinc. Uh, the metals precipitate out of a concentrated solution much more easily than they do from a solution that is low concentration of metals. And the reason is when you've got a concentrated solution like this is going to be after I get done dissolving it, when I put that zinc in there, the precipitate will be nice and fluffy and stick together. It'll settle quick. With the uh, metal cementing out on zinc uh, from the previous part of the video there, it was in a low concentration of solution. And when the uh, metals precipitate out of a low concentrated solution, it forms a real fine particulate that is suspends in the solution and does not settle. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna put this back in solution, re-cement it, so I can get it into a nice fluffy precipitate that settles quickly. Then I can rinse all the zinc out of it. Been a couple minutes since I added that hydrogen peroxide. Here you can see the, uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera there, but right there is the, uh, the black powder, the platinum group metals. 
and I want to get this all back into solution so I can cement it back out with zinc and get some nice fluffy black precipitate that settles quickly. It's been about 20 minutes since I added that first dose of hydrogen peroxide, 12% hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to get a temperature reading here. And we've got 161 Fahrenheit, 71.8 Celsius. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add another little dose of uh, hydrogen peroxide. I can still see metal down in the bottom here, so I'm going to pour in a little bit more hydrogen peroxide. been about uh, five minutes, ten minutes since I added that last uh, dosage of hydrogen peroxide. And I don't know if you can see it, there's still some black powder on the bottom there, so I'm going to add a little bit more, try to get everything to go in solution. some metal here from a previous experiment. This, I've had this for years uh, and just sitting on my shelf. I'm going to go ahead and add this to this experiment. It's going to skew the results that I get from my uh, platinum group metals. There's probably five or six grams of uh, palladium here in this container that I'm adding. So we'll have to account for that when we go get our yield from the uh, catalytic converters. But I just wanted to add this in. It's, I had it sitting in my shop for years, man. just want to get that into this uh, group so I can precipitate everything out and get, a, uh, get all the metal out of the solution instead of just letting it sit around. The solution's been on the heat with hydrogen peroxide added to it for about uh, half an hour now. I'm going to get a little bit on a piece of filter paper here, just do a stannous chloride test just to show you how concentrated this stuff is. It turns almost black, but it has such a high concentration of uh, metals in it. That's what we want to see. The solution's been on here now for about an hour, and I've got everything to go in solution. It's, ever, it's all dissolved. Look underneath here see there's just uh, some probably some zinc compound that's in there uh, but all the precious metals has gone to the solution turn the stir bar off turn off the heat I'm gonna take this off the heat now and let it cool down so we can filter it now I'll check the temperature of the solution here we've had it off the heat about 10 minutes now. I got 61.6 Celsius, 143 Fahrenheit. I'm going to add a couple of ice cubes here to try to uh, get it cooled off. I don't want to increase the volume of that solution too much. I'm going to keep it concentrated as I can, but I want to get it uh, cooled off so I can filter it. I've had the solution in the refrigerator, get it cooled down. It's down to 71 degrees Fahrenheit, 21.6 degrees Celsius. I've got a filter flask set up down here. Now what I'm going to do is uh, filter the uh, zinc compound out of the solution here. Last little 
bit in the beaker here and that uh, fine material that precipitated out when I dissolved the uh, black powder there it is I don't know what that is I think it's a uh, a compound of zinc and I'll save that in a filter and uh, maybe do some experiments on it later the bottom line is it's clog the filter up so that it's coming out and just drips now. This is a consequence of dissolving the uh, platinum group metals black powder. Uh, it slowed the filter way down here. That's a fine particulate matter. Stop the filter up and it's going to take a while for all this to filter down through the filter paper there. Full vacuum. But even so, this is going to slow me down a little bit right here. but. Uh, it's not going to slow me down as much as it would have if I'd have tried to rinse off those real fine black powders. They would have never settled. It would have taken days to get the zinc out of it, get the uh, stir bar out of there. Okay, the uh, vacuum has been on this thing for about an hour now. It's taken about an hour to filter this all through. I don't know where I'd be without my vacuum pump. pump has been running full blast for about an hour. Got it at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 65.2 Celsius. This thing's going to get an oil change as soon as I shut it off. It's a workhorse. I don't know where I'd be without it. Fahrenheit, 66.4 Celsius. I'm not kidding you. I'm giving it an oil change right now. It deserves it. Okay, I've got all the uh, salt that was in the uh, solution there filtered out. Here's what that looks like. I think it's uh, maybe it's like zinc chloride or something like that. Anyway, it's out of the solution. Now's where the big payoff comes. This added a couple extra hours to my uh, video. But when you see how well this uh, cements out, you'll see why I did it. little bit of residue left in the bottom of the flask here. I'll put that in my stock pot. I'm not going to add it to the solution. I don't want to contaminate it. Okay, I've got all the uh, platinum group metals here in a solution. It's only, it's less than 800 ml. And uh, when I first started out, I had about five gallons of solution with this much material in it. So I've evaporated all the uh, water off. I've got a lot of the solution out of the way concentrated solution. Now we're going to add some zinc pieces here and this should go right quick here. Get a temperature reading here. We got 49.6 Celsius, 121.5 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a lot of heat given off for this uh, zinc reaction. Right, it only took about 20 minutes to cement that uh, 
metal out of solution. I've got everything in a, a nice fluffy precipitate now. I'm going to siphon off the waste solution into my bucket. And then we'll burn out the rest of the zinc with a uh, 10 to 1 hydrochloric acid, dilute hydrochloric acid solution. Uh, just like before, I've got a tube full of water here. And I'm going to siphon the solution off into my waste bucket. some boiling hot tap water here. I'm going to go ahead and give it a uh, quick rinse with boiling hot tap water. Watch how fast it settles. That boiling water caused it to settle here in about, uh, it's been about three minutes sitting. I'm going to siphon this off and then we're going to go with a hydrochloric acid, uh, dilute hydrochloric acid, one to ten hydrochloric to uh, water. Get the rest of the zinc out of here. Here's our uh, fluffy uh, mixed black platinum group metals there. Settles quickly. Just exactly what I was after. I'm going to go ahead and add some uh, hydrochloric acid to get the rest of the zinc out of here now. Now I'll add some uh, tap water here, about a couple hundred ml, just plain tap water. And then I'm going to add about uh, 20 ml or so of hydrochloric acid to make a dilute solution of hydrochloric acid and this will hopefully uh, dissolve out any excess zinc that might be in there just let this sit for a while okay, this is our solution been sitting here for about 15 minutes. I don't see any reaction at all in there, so I'm going to conclude that all the zinc has been dissolved out of this. I'm going to go ahead and siphon this off and start rinsing it with fresh water. I've got some pH test strips here. I'm going to dip one of them in the solution, check the pH. If we're close to neutral, if all the acid is gone out of it, then it's pretty safe to bet that uh, all the zinc will be gone out of it too. Let's see what we got here. And we're at. Uh, Still down here in the uh, about 4.5 region, so I need to do some more rinsing until I get up here to the 7.5 or 7.0 region, which is neutral pH. I've got another pH test strip here. I'm going to stick it, stick it down in the water. And let's see what we got here. Now that's, I'm going to say that's 7.0 easy. I'm neutral now. 
we're good to go. I think it's safe to conclude that all the uh, zinc is out of here if all the acid's been rinsed out. So we can go to the next step. Okay, for this next step, what I'm going to do is uh, pre-weigh a 600 ml beaker here. I'm going to write the weight right on the side of it. It's 198.9. One ninety eight point nine grams. Okay, here I've got our pre weight beaker. I'm going to transfer the black powder into our beaker here. Here's got a little bit of black residue on the bottom there. I'll add that to my waste bucket. I'll go ahead and put uh, put the heat on back here. Pour off the uh, rest of the rinse water out of here. Now that we've got this to neutral, try to get as much of the water out of here as possible. Then I'm going to put it on the heat back there and evaporate it to uh, dryness so we can get a weight on the amount of powder that we got in this beaker. All right, I'm going to try to draw off as much of this liquid as I can without getting any of the black powder up in here. black powder. What I'll do now is go ahead and put it on some low heat back here and evaporate it to dryness real slow. Okay, here's our moment of truth. See what kind of yield we got. Remember, we added some palladium from a previous experiment here, so put it on the scale. And we've got 219.8. 219.8. Okay, the beaker weighs 219.8. Let's subtract 198.9, which is the weight of the empty beaker come up with 20.9 grams of mixed black powder. Okay, at this point, we've got 20.9 grams of uh, relatively pure platinum and palladium. There's probably going to be a little bit of rhodium in there too. Uh, metals mixed together in black powder form. And what we could do with this right now, nothing else needs to be done. We could bag this up and send it to the refiner, uh, a refiner that gives credit for platinum and palladium. I don't think any of them give credit for rhodium, but uh, you could get credit for the platinum and the palladium out of this, and no further action is required. However, what I'm going to do for part two of the video is I'm going to take this, and we're going to go ahead and uh, refine this and try to separate out the metals and see if we can get some pure platinum and pure palladium. So this will conclude part one of the catalytic converter recovery videos. Part one is done. Part two is coming up. Thanks for watching.